Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to tackle the problem called the game of life. So the game of life is a sort of means of survival where we have a state of zeros and ones or in you know, the actual game, we have alive states and we have dead states of populations. Uh, one will represent an alive state and a zero will represent a dead state of a population. So um, we also need to define this term called n. So what does n mean? n represents the um, live neighbor count surrounding an element. So if we take a look at this poor drawing to the right, um, we have this element called E, and we have eight possible neighbors following these various uh, cardinality directions here. Um, but not every element will have um, eight possible neighbors. It's entirely possible that they'll have three or they'll have five. So keeping that in mind, let's take a look at the rules that determine um, how we can construct the second state given our first state over here. So a one stays as a one if we have two live neighbors surrounding it or we have three live neighbors. A one becomes a zero if we reach the condition where we have less than two neighbors, AKA an underpopulation and not enough helping out, or we have an overpopulation, which is n over th n is greater than three, uh, which represents that, you know, we have a scarce number of resources and we're kind of fighting for survival of the fittest. Now, we have another case over here where zero becomes a one. This basically represents a repopulation in a given area or a given um, segment over here. And that happens if we have exactly three neighbors, three live neighbors. Reproduction happens and then boom, we're all happy again. Um, now a zero stays as a zero if um, n is not equal to three or we don't have exactly three live neighbors. This could mean that there's an underpopulation and uh, there's not enough breeding going around to repopulate this area or there's too much going on and uh, when we try to repopulate this area, um, you know, it just dies off because it's so new and uh, so vulnerable to everything else. So anyways, let's um, try to translate state number one to the following state given this rule set over here. So we take a look at the one. The one will only have one live neighbor to it. So we reach into um, our little handy uh, backpack of rules and we see that since we have less than two neighbors, the one becomes a zero. Now we take a look at the zero over here. It has one live neighbor, two live neighbor, and three live neighbors. Since it has exactly three live neighbors, um, it's the perfect recipe for repopulating, so the zero becomes a one in the secondary state. Now this zero over here only has two surrounding live population groups, and that does not meet the condition of repopulation, so it stays as a zero. Now, we move down to this element over here. This zero has exactly three live neighbors, and since it has three live neighbors, it's a perfect candidate for repopulation. Things get fun and busy over there. Now we take a look at this one over here. Now try to imagine that I drew this a little bit better so it's a little easier to tell. But there are four live neighbors or live population neighboring groups around it. And therefore there's too much competition in this area. Which means that we fall under the case of uh, number two over here where the one turns into a zero. Now we take a look at the one over here, this one only has two surrounding live population groups. So there's not too much competition and there's not too little, you know, resources are helping out each other. So it's just perfect. So this population lives to the next round. Now we take a look at this population down here in the bottom left. It only has one surrounding um, live population. And since there's not enough um, help to go around for survival, it becomes a zero. Now we take a look at this zero over here and it has four surrounding um, live populations groups, which basically means that um, what will happen is we could repopulate here, but it'll die off due to a lack of number of resources around it. So it stays as a zero when we move to the second state. And this one over here only has two live neighboring populations, so it will survive here. So, um, voila, we have a we have our translation from state one to state two over here, applying some sort of function. And 
yeah, I hope that this makes a little bit of sense. In the next video, we'll cover um, the optimized programming solution to solving the game of life.